The first time I came across these insane images, I thought they had to be photoshopped. I mean, your classic choo-choo train can't be capable of producing those nasty-looking steampunk tentacle things from within them, right? I was wrong. These are definitely real images, and unfortunately, the disaster that they're capturing, well, it's happened many times. Us humans have tried taming pressurized steam, and we've often failed. Thousands of people have been injured or killed in boiler engine explosions across history, and often these beasts of a machine that were intended to contain that very steam power destroyed themselves in horrifying ways. So today, I want to answer a few questions. What is it that makes steam so hard to contain? And why does it cause such violent reactions when it explodes? And while we're at it, what was the worst boil explosion across all of human history? Clearly, something remarkable happens inside these locomotive boiler engines, something powerful enough to create these famously disturbing scenes. These engines have enough energy to fail in such a violent fashion that we see entire train cars launch into the air and land on another train. We also see six-story buildings crash to the ground, tragically killing over 150 people when the boiler engine fails that they use for manufacturing. And we see these famous trains explode from the inside like a sea cucumber releasing its innards. Sorry, this is the second time I've referred to a train as some sort of sea animal. I'll try not to do it again. So, like electricity, steam is a harnessable energy, and when water is heated from the firebox, steam is the byproduct. The steam is hot, but we can make it hotter. See, the steam gets heated once again to make it even more energy dense through what's called the superheater pipes that go back towards the firebox, and eventually, this superheated steam will be used to drive the pistons and wheels. But is there really that much energy contained in the boiler? Mmm, yes, yes there is. In fact, the amount of energy contained inside a locomotive engine can be equivalent to the energy of 2,560 pounds of TNT, which that is equivalent to 2.56 trillion calories, and that's like 49 million grapefruits of energy all inside the steam engine. Okay, maybe calories wasn't that useful of a conversion, but still, a potential 2,560 pounds of TNT worth of energy being generated by controlled heating of water is amazing and potentially dangerous as we've seen. In the boiler, the water and steam can get to temperatures normally not possible on the surface of the earth, since when under high amounts of pressure, water can reach temperatures greater than 400 degrees Fahrenheit without transforming into steam, like it normally would at 212 degrees. So, let's say a crack happens in the firebox or in any part of the system that maintains the pressure. All the pent-up energy that's stored in the water and the steam as heat and pressure can escape all at once rather than in the slow, controlled fashion that drives the pistons normally. The steam will rapidly try and dissipate into the lower pressure air surrounding the train, and this brings with it large pieces of liquid water that carry huge amounts of kinetic energy with their fast movement. This effect has an unofficial name called a, quote, water hammer that firefighters and plumbers are well aware of, and with hundreds to even thousands of pounds of water rapidly escaping the steam engine at speeds of over 100 miles per hour. This is how you get behaviors such as the trains flipping into the air or metal within getting strung out all around the train. Locomotive explosions like these have happened quite frequently since we started using them, though something like 80% of all locomotive explosions happened in the 1800s, and that only leaves 20% happening in the 1900s, which this demonstrates our improved engineered control over these steam beasts and our eventual move away to diesel. Now unfortunately, a lot of damage had been done already before we finally stopped having such common incidents. This is a Union Pacific 9000, and this is one that violently exploded in 1948 when the water levels got too low. When the operator got concerned about the levels, he reportedly began climbing down the train ladder to check on the status, and apparently that's when the train blew up, and the boiler was ripped from its base and smoke box, killing the operator. There's a rumor that pictures of this exact explosion were hung in future Union Pacific trains for some time to remind operators to maintain good water levels so that they don't face the same fate. There is a list on Wikipedia here you can browse with most of the significant boiler explosions, and a few caught my eye as quite interesting. See, we don't know much about the first railway explosion, but we do know that it killed between 13 and 16 people in the year 1815 in Philadelphia, England. This was a very weird and early train design, where a small steam engine was on four wheels, but the movement was actually driven by mechanical feet behind the train, a primitive method that was rarely used, but even this small engine had enough energy to kill at least 13 people with its blast. Steam boiler engines were also used in stationary industrial factories and on boats. One early boiler explosion was the 1850 Hog Street explosion in New York City at a printing press manufacturer. 
This blast tragically killed at least 67 people, and supposedly, the top of the boiler shot through six floors of the building before erupting out the building's rooftop. Multiple sources claim the building lifted multiple feet off of the ground due to the explosion, and the building collapsed after its landing. But the worst steam explosion of them all, and this is by a huge margin, was the Sultana Steamboat Explosion of 1865 that killed 1,195 people after its four boiler engines exploded. So the Sultana was a wooden steamboat designed to transport a maximum of 376 people up and down the Mississippi River. Now, if that 376 count made you think twice, you're onto something. And you didn't mishear me, almost 1,200 people died on a boat meant to hold 376 people. Now, while there are likely many people who could share some of the blame, it seems the primary two are the ship captain, James Mason, and the officer in charge of loading the ship, Captain George Williams. Through the full combined brain power of at least two idiots and at most two brain cells, the Sultana was allowed to be filled with 2,130 total people when it left. And keep in mind, the people in charge knew they were going upriver in flood conditions with a sketch repair job that was rushed just hours before the boat left to head upstream when filled at over five times the capacity. So in the middle of the night, around seven miles from Memphis, Tennessee, the recently repaired boiler suddenly exploded. It's estimated that the explosion killed four to 500 men instantly, and then the wooden ship caught fire, taking around another 500 lives with it. So, while boiler engines and steam engines are certainly dangerous and have the power within them to produce horrifying disasters, most of the time, the true cause of the disasters are the humans asking too much of the machines that they have no business messing around with. In our modern world, there are many powerful and useful technologies in use and being improved every day. But we need to make sure and remember that the incredible usefulness and power these technologies provide us often indicates that there are potential disastrous consequences in situations where the technologies are misused or abused. This is Jake from Illogical Gates, and I hope to see you guys in another gate.